Hello everyone, welcome to Sunne IS and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about the functions of an ecosystem. And trust me when I say this, one of the most interesting chapters of your entire UPSC preparation. And of course, one of the most interesting chapters of environment as a subject. And not just interesting, it is also very uh, full of weightage for your examination because uh, questions come directly as well as indirectly from this particular chapter. All right. So with this, let's start uh, with the functions of an ecosystem. Before we start, let me just tell you a little bit about our course that is Refi's entire prelim syllabus through 3000 plus MCQs. The only concern that um, students have, be it first attempters, second attempters, third attempters, uh, or last attempters, whatever is your attempt number, the concern is that syllabus complete karne ke baad bhi, with the current type of options that are coming up, will we be able to, you know, uh, go through the examination or not? Because we need to know everything. Elimination is now eliminated, right? So, yes, the answer is, first of all, because the difficulty level has gone up, the cutoff goes low. But other than that also, how you can clear that cutoff is that when you are very sure about your basics and your current affairs, okay, and your PYQs, you get a perfect mix of preparation and that is our goal. So, our questions in this 3000 plus MCQ series are always based on previous year questions and static and the mixture of current. Okay, wherever necessary. So, we'll be covering, uh, we have covered Indian polity, Indian eco uh, economy, modern history, we've covered geography, now we're coming to environment. We'll do art and culture, ancient medieval science and tech and current affairs. That is our entire plan throughout this, um, uh, this particular course. And the benefit that you get on purchasing the course, which we have made pretty affordable, is that you can attempt the questions in advance, see the descriptions in advance and come to the lecture only if and when required so that your uh, time is massively saved because time is the most important resource right now. Okay, so you can contact on this number, visit this website and with this now let's start with the very first question. Consider the following statements. Grazing food chains can be found in both terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems. The major conduit of energy flow in aquatic ecosystem is through the grazing food chain. A much larger fraction of energy flows through the detritus food chain in terrestrial ecosystems compared to the grazing food chain. How many of the given statements are incorrect? So, food chain, we are all aware of. Bachpan se, we have heard, we have read about it. That there are plants, deer eat the plants, then lion eats the deer, etc, etc, etc. So, now that we are studying for UPSC, there are two types of uh, food chains. One is grazing food chain. Grazing food chain happens on land. Uh, sorry, grazing food chain and detritus food chain. So, grazing food chain is such that it starts from autotrophs, not grazing and detritus both happen on land and water. Grazing starts from autotrophs, wherein we are having the organisms which create their own food. So, basically plants, right, or some kind of algae or bacteria. So, autotrophs, okay, autotrophs ko khayenge, then heterotrophs, so herbivores will be having the um, autotrophs, then carnivores will be having the herbivores. Now, surprisingly, although you always have read grazing food chain on land, but grazing food chain is the majority energy transfer that happens underwater. Underwater, in the marine environments, it is the grazing food chain which leads to maximum energy transfer. Energy transfer means that autotrophs have created energy from them, the energy will be transferred to the uh, heterotrophs, then from one heterotroph to the other heterotroph, then so on and so forth and so forth, right? So, grazing food chain transfers most of the energy in underwater mechanism, 
while the detritus food chain what is detritus food chain which starts from dead and decaying remains which starts from dead material of plants and animals theek hai so the detritus food chain leads to majority of energy transfer on terrestrial ecosystem theek hai ye yaad rakhna hai that detritus food chain will uh, transfer more and more energy through the terrestrial ecosystem terrestrial means on the land so land pe kya hai there is animal kingdom right everyone wants to kill each other and go forward so isse yaad rakhna hai and logically also you always see that you know detritus jo hai the dead and decaying matter earthworm will be feeding on that detritus then earthworm ko some rat will eat the earthworm then rat ko some other organism will eat etc etc and uh, top of the chain there are top carnivores like lions tigers etc and even after that there is another very important layer which is called saprotroph saprotroph like vultures etc right so detritus food chain will lead to maximum energy transfer in a terrestrial ecosystem uh, so here grazing food chain can be found in both terrestrial aquatic absolutely correct major conduit of energy uh, flows in aquatic ecosystem is through the grazing food chain this is also absolutely correct and much larger fraction of energy flows through detritus food chain in terrestrial ecosystem this is absolutely correct so incorrect to kuch bhi nahi hai yahan pe to here d is the correct answer please remember jaise maine aapko bataya is tarike se isko yaad rakhna ki on the terrestrial ecosystem everyone wants to just eat each other and kill each other and survive so you will be able to remember okay chalo next pe chale consider the following pairs with respect to ecological succession autogenic succession hydrox succession xerox succession allogenic succession uh, so yahan pe number kar lena inko this is a b c and d okay first understand the concept of succession very quickly see whichever ecosystem we have studied na ecosystem then biome then uh, biosphere so whichever ecosystem you are a part of let's say you are uh, currently studying a grassland ecosystem grassland ecosystem or you are studying a desert ecosystem all of these are separate ecosystems the chain of ecological succession the chain is such that every community would go on to become a climax community every community every ecosystem will go on to achieve the climax community and climax community will always be a forest theek hai even seas can also transform into forests are you understanding that there is gradual drying up of uh, water then the sea the the sea level just comes to the top and because water is evaporated i'll give you an example and upsc also asked this run of kutch run of kutch earlier it was a sea it was submerged under sea and now run of kutch is a desert right what is this this is an example of ecological succession eventually what will happen this desert will also get over a period of million of years this desert will also get uh, some vegetation and that vegetation eventually will transform to a forest another example i'll give you whenever you leave a particular a particular um, surrounding just barren you leave it you do not do anything over there you do not live there you do not do anything over there let's say you leave a building theek hai so that building you see after a few years will be covered in trees right it will be covered in some kind of vegetation it will be covered in some kind of creepers climbers because that is the law of succession so ultimately every community every ecosystem is going towards becoming a forest but then where they start from where they start from gives them the kind of name for example 
हाइड्राक सक्सेशन हाइड्राक सक्सेशन हाइड्रा वर्ड है ना मीन्स वॉटर सो हाइड्राक सक्सेशन मीन्स दैट वेन द सक्सेशन इज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम अ मरीन एनवायरमेंट दैट इज हाइड्राक सक्सेशन ओके so that is succession taking place in an aquatic ecosystem even that will end up in a forest only theek hai so that is there then zerak succession zerak ka hamesha yaad rakhna z word not a z x x word x word is um, associated with dry theek hai to zerak means dry ecosystems uh, so let's say desert se aap dheere 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 karke forest ki taraf jate hain that becomes a zerak succession so this is this will be matched by this then autogenic succession and allogenic succession see auto auto means you are automatically doing something and who automatically does something living beings automatically do something otherwise those who are abiotic those which are not living they will not be able to do anything automatically till any external force is applied to them right newton's law of motion right so autogenic succession means succession by biotic components of the ecosystem fine so the trees are um, evolving themselves the animals are evolving themselves and because of that there is succession happening then allogenic succession allogenic succession is succession by abiotic components like i just told you the run of kutch the run of kutch water withdrawing from the run of kutch and run of kutch becoming a desert that is an allogenic succession because water is an abiotic component right so allogenic is abiotic component so autogenic uh, c ho gaya 1 ka c ho gaya 2 is b 3 is d and 4 is a so b is the correct answer succession is a very important topic and i hope you are clear with it now let's move on to the next one consider the following statements regarding energy flow in an ecosystem the efficiency of transferring energy from one trophic level to another is referred to as ecological efficiency bioaccumulation entails the progressive concentration of pollutants or toxins through higher trophic levels and biomagnification describes the gradual accumulation of pollutants or chemicals in organisms how many of the statements given above is or so incorrect statement pucha hai dhyan se incorrect correct ka kabhi bhi difference bhulna nahi hai na yahan pe it is in italics sometimes it might not be in italics also so please remember that so here let's talk about the efficiency of transferring energy see whichever trophic level you are a part of let's say this is an autotroph the next trophic level will be a heterotroph uh, yahan pe banate hain autotroph then next trophic level will be a heterotroph who will be a herbivore theek hai herbivore herbivore means who eats plants so from one trophic level to the next trophic level only 10% energy is transferred 10% energy made by the plants only that much energy is transferred to the next level then from the herbivore only 10% energy is transferred to the next level then from the carnivore uh, the only 10% energy is transferred to the next level of carnivore okay so please remember this that um, energy transfer is not a very efficient process so the efficiency of transferring energy from one trophic level to another is referred to as ecological efficiency is absolutely correct then bio accumulation when does something accumulate in something something accumulates in something when uh, the quantity in a single organism is increasing right so bio accumulation is not progressive concentration bio accumulation is measured in a single organism let's say let's say we are talking about a pollutant called ddt ddt theek hai ddt mosquito repellents mein use hota hai fertilizers mein use hota hai ddt and it is a bio accumulant and bio magnifying uh, bio magnifying pollutant so ddt if let's say you are you bhi nahi lete hain lower uh, organisms lete hain let's say we measure on the 
level of rabbits. How much DDT is accumulated at the level of rabbit will be this bioaccumulation, right? DDT is a pollutant and how much is accumulated inside a rabbit will be bioaccumulation. Just like we study that in, you know, the marine organisms, plastic is being accumulated, right? So that's bioaccumulation. But let's say you are studying here, this is rabbit, then this is deer. Now deer is not having just one rabbit. Deer is having multiple rabbits as meal. So here the quantity of the pollutant is increasing. It is magnifying. Fine. Then from the deer you go to the lion. Lion is having one deer every few days. And that's why in the lion the quantity of DDT is increasing. Then you come that lion is dead and lion is being, ha uh, is, uh, you know, um, being consumed by vulture. Fine, vulture is having a lion every other day. So, again, addition of the pollutants. And that's why, you know, for vultures, the drug diclofenac and endosulfan they have been banned to be produced in cattle because when cattle have this, cattle have these drugs which are uh, given to them in order to increase their milk productivity and then they die, then vultures uh, use, uh, the vultures eat them. In that case, what happens is that these, the quantity of these pollute, the quantity of these uh, chemicals increases in the vultures and that leads to antimicrobial resistance and eventual death. Okay, so here what I am trying to say is that bioaccumulation is measured at the level of one organism. So bioaccumulation uh, describes the gradual accumulation of pollutants or chemical in organism and biomagnification is the progressive concentration of pollutants or toxins through higher trophic levels. So as and when you keep on going upwards in a trophic level, the accumulation of that pollutant will keep on increasing because the upper organism is having more and more quantity of the lower organism. Okay. So that is very important. So... Biomagnification is this progressive concentration. Bioaccumulation is gradual accumulation in a single organism. So on, only one is correctly mashed, but incorrect pucha hai. So only two will be the correct answer. Only two are incorrect over here. Theek hai? Chalo. Next pe chalte hai. Which of the following statements best defines the term homeostasis in the function of an ecosystem? Tendency of a biological system to resist change, allowing an ecosystem to maintain its stability. Equal proportion of species richness in a given ecosystem at a particular time of the year. Water carrying capacity of the entire ecosystem in a Zeraj community or none of the above. So, homeostasis, homeostasis basically implies keeping an even state of being, keeping an even biological system and resisting any kind of external change to make sure that our body is not negatively impacted. And homeostasis is done by all kinds of organisms. For example, let's say, let's say, if you are attacked by a foreign virus, hai na? virus has attacked you and uh, it is impacting your immune system. What will your body react? How will your body react? It will raise the temperature. Raise the body temperature. Raise the body temperature so that your body feels better prepared to fight with this particular virus and this particular virus because of the heat can be eliminated, right? So, that is an example of homeostasis and it's a tendency on an individual level. And on a uh, biological system level, it is the tendency of a biological system to resist change and allowing an ecosystem to maintain its stability. 
ठीक है सो दैट इज देयर एंड दिस इज द आंसर फॉर होमियोस्टैटिस इट हैपेंस एट द लेवल ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल आल्सो हैपेंस एट द लेवल ऑफ अ इकोसिस्टम आल्सो फाइन सो ए इज द आंसर फॉर दिस वन कंसीडर द फॉलोइंग पेयर्स रिगार्डिंग होमियोस्टैटिस ऑफ एन इकोसिस्टम थर्मोरेगुलेशन थर्मल कंफर्मिटी सीड डॉर्मेंसी सस्पेंशन एंड सीजनल माइग्रेशन सो यहाँ पे कौन कौन से करेक्टली मैच्ड है देखो ये अलग अलग तरीके हैं होमियोस्टैसिस मेंटेन करने के फाइन इन अ पर्टिकुलर इन अ पर्टिकुलर इको सिस्टम होमियोस्टैसिस कैन बी मेंटेन बाय मल्टीपल वेज एंड दीज फोर आर वेज टू मेंटेन होमियोस्टैसिस सो ओनली वेन ऑर्गेनिज्म विल मेंटेन होमियोस्टैसिस विल द इको सिस्टम एज अ होल मेंटेन होमियोस्टैसिस राइट सो थर्मो रेगुलेशन रेगुलेट करना किसी चीज को दैट मीन्स मेंटेन करना राइट लेट से इफ यू आर रेगुलेटिंग योर वेट तो यू आर मेंटेनिंग योर वेट इन अ सर्टेन रेंज सो थर्मो रेगुलेशन मीन्स दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू मेंटेन आर इंटरनल बॉडी टेम्परेचर अकॉर्डिंग टू द बॉडी अकॉर्डिंग टू द टेम्परेचर ऑफ द एनवायरमेंट एंड दैट इज वाई ऑर्गेनिज्म लाइक ह्यूमन बींग्स वी आर एबल टू सर्वाइव इन वाइड वेराइटी ऑफ टेम्परेचर बिकॉज वी Ten to thermoregulate ourselves, right? So thermoregulation is maintaining internal body temperature consistent with surroundings. Which kind of organisms will do thermoregulation? We have already talked about uh, urihaline and stenohaline organisms. So here only urihaline organisms will be able to do thermoregulation. That means they'll be able to change their internal temperature according to external temperature steno steno uh, no urethermal not urihaline sorry urethermal and stenothermal so only urethermal will be able to only urethermal organisms will be able to maintain their internal body temperature according to the external environment so urethermal organisms will do thermoregulation then thermal conformity what is being conformant what is conforming to something that you are basically um, changing something according to the external atmosphere right so thermal conformity happens when we change our body temperature in response to surrounding temperature there are some organisms which go to the extreme temperature according to the um, temperature of the environment like we for example human beings we will always tend to maintain a particular temperature of our body we will not go we cannot go to minus 50 minus 60 degree celsius right but there are some organisms which can change their temperature according to surrounding temperature just to survive okay so that is thermal conformity so here both of them are incorrectly matched please remember this hai na then seed dormancy suspension it's very clear by the name that the germination of seeds basically the creation of seeds it is temporarily halted so that energy can be saved because externally let's say there is no availability of food no availability of uh, um you know proper environment proper climate so you tend to preserve your energy so that you can use that energy to live for longer theek hai so temporary halting of seed germination that is seed dormancy suspension absolutely correct then seasonal migration temporary movement of organisms for their habitat this is absolutely correct you know a lot of birds do this right a uh, siberian crane for example siberian crane jo hai uh, they will come from siberia to countries like india and pakistan during winters because the arctic becomes inhabitable so here only two are correct and these four are the ways to maintain homeostasis at the level of an organism and when at the level of an organism the homeostasis is maintained then at the level of a community also at the level of an ecosystem also the homeostasis is maintained okay next With regard to energy flow in an ecosystem, consider the following statements: 
energy flow in an ecosystem is represented through the different trophic levels energy flow will always will be always unidirectional through trophic levels from producers and there will be decrease in energy at each trophic level due to loss in the form of heat how many of the given statements are correct so energy flow in an ecosystem basically this is one thing where only is not incorrect never will this happen that in a plant this is a plant hai na let's say this is a plant and these are the leaves and uh, you know it's going somewhat like this so it is basically doing photosynthesis never will a deer who is at a higher trophic level transfer energy here theek hai it will never happen it will only happen upwards now you might think that ma'am uh, these particular organisms they die then they release nutrients into the soil then that nutrient is taken up by the plant and that is how they are also contributing that is a separate food chain that is the detritus food chain remember detritus food chain bolenge usko hum that is not um, the grazing food chain in grazing food chain the energy transfer will happen only from the bottom to top theek hai detritus food chain me uh, may be only unidirectional energy flow is there any kind of food chain unidirectional energy flow is there theek hai so energy flow will always be unidirectional through trophic levels from producers this is absolutely correct then energy flow in an ecosystem is represented through different trophic levels even this is absolutely correct hai na various trophic levels autotrophs heterotrophs saprotrophs then there will be decrease in energy at each trophic level due to loss in the form of heat this is absolutely correct as i told you that let's say this is level number 1 autotroph to the next level only 10% of the heat uh, of the energy of the previous level will be able to percolate here so here all three statements are correct and it's important to know about the energy flow how an energy how the energy flows through an ecosystem next consider the following statements regarding the food chain of an ecosystem a food chain is often described as a linear hierarchy of feeding illustrating the flow of food energy across trophic levels food webs attempts to portray various potential paths of energy flow within an ecosystem and food chain provides more stability to an ecosystem than the food web how many of the given statements is or are correct so here please remember food chain we all have grown up seeing that food chain so it is a linear hierarchy of feeding but when multiple food chains collaborate with each other when multiple food chains are seen in context of each other for example deer is not just eaten by a tiger deer is also eaten by a lion deer might also be eaten by a bear deer might also be eaten by um, the dead remains वैसे elephant तो नहीं खाएगा elephant is a herbivore but you know other big deer might be eaten eaten by a leopard also theek hai uh leopard also so alag alag food chains ek hi time pe they are coexisting and that is what a food web is fine so food chain is a linear hierarchy and food webs attempt to portray various potential paths of energy flow within an ecosystem this is an absolutely correct thing and food web will always be more stable because it will lead to multiple food chains depending upon each other and um, you know even when one one particular element is taken away even then that particular web can survive because that level can be fulfilled by some other organism so there are deer maybe there are multiple varieties of deers right which can be eaten uh, so that is why the food web will always be more stable so food chain provide more stability this is incorrect here only two is the correct answer clear chalo the term diapause best defines which of the following the process of shutting down life processes by maintaining a physiological state of dormancy 
destruction of an ecosystem by external invaders such as pests etc self destruction of an ecosystem by allowing invasive alien species into it an intense forest fire happening all around western ghats so dire pause kya hota hai it's very clear from the name that something is pausing so dire pause is the process of shutting down the life processes by maintaining a physiological state of dormancy physiological means remember physiological morphological physiological is when we do changes inside our body morphological is when those changes are visible outside the body right so first is correct over here and that is what dire pause is again when conditions are not favorable then dire pause is uh, an automatic response of an ecosystem that life processes will be shut down next consider the following pairs regarding biotic interactions in a food web this is a very very important topic and you need to know this thoroughly commensalism predation amensalism and mutualism so i'll not read all of this we'll straight away come to the answer if you want you can pause this and you can think about the answer how many of the above are correctly matched commensalism commensalism is when one organism is positively affected jaise jab hum comment karte hai na kisi ko when someone comments someone to that person who is being commended who is being appreciated is being benefited but the person who is appreciating does not really gain anything out of it right so commensalism is that one person is benefited one party is benefited and the other has no reaction the other has no impact on itself for example if let's say there is a shark and a shark on the shark's uh, back or below the shark there are sucker fish sucker fish which are moving below the shark um to get the protection that the shark offers right so that will be commensalism because shark is not negatively affected shark is not affected at all but sucker fish is being benefited so one species benefits while other remains neither harmed nor benefited that is commensalism then predation predation as you are very clearly aware predation will mean that one organism has eaten the other organism so one is positively affected because you have eaten that organism but one is very negatively affected because one dies right so one species benefits from consuming another while other is harmed this is absolutely correct then amensalism this is the opposite of commensalism that one species is harmed while the other remains unaffected so for example uh one species is harmed the other is unaffected let's say there is a tall tree there is a tall tree which is blocking sunlight for the uh for for the trees which are growing beneath it so tall tree is just growing in its own might but this bottom most tree is not getting sunlight because of which it is not able to grow to its height so the tall tree is not affected the bottom tree is affected and that means that is amensalism so one species is inhibited other remains unaffected this is correct and mutualism mutualism is when both are positively affected so both species benefit from their interaction so iska sabse bada example jo upsc ne pucha bhi hai this is sea anemones attached to hermit crabs theek hai ab ek hi tarike ka uh, interaction bachta hai which is competition 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 basically is the opposite of mutualism wherein both are negatively impacted fine competition mein both will be negatively impacted so here all four are correctly matched and all five kinds of biotic interactions are extremely important for the examination point of view in the examination you will be getting a kind of um, application based question you will not be getting a conceptual question from here you will be getting an application based question next with respect to the pyramids of ecology consider the following statements 
the pyramid of biomass remains inverted for both aquatic and terrestrial ecosystem as stated uh the pyramid of numbers can exhibit both upright and inverted forms depending on the ecosystem and the specific organisms involved and the pyramid of energy will always be upright for any ecosystem so the pyramid of energy pyramid of biomass pyramid of uh, organisms these are three kind of pyramids see pyramid of energy bahut clear hai maine aapko bataya hai whichever ecosystem is there to the next trophic level only 10% of the energy of the previous trophic level will go theek hai to pyramid of energy will always remain upright theek hai ye yaad rakhna hamesha but other pyramids let's say we are trying to calculate the number of organisms at each trophic level so that is pyramid of number and that can be like this also or it can be inverted also how will it be inverted let's say there is a sea ecosystem wherein at the top of the sea um uh wherein at the uh, top of uh, acha we are talking about biomass we, let's talk about the pyramid of biomass right now at the top of the sea in a pyramid of biomass there is there are organisms like blue whale theek hai there are organisms like blue whale and at the bottom of the sea there are smaller phytoplanktons right bottom of the sea not the sea bottom bottom of the sea means the autotrophs of the sea so there are organisms which are creating their own food but they are very light in weight so the pyramid of biomass will be inverted in a sea ecosystem similarly the pyramid of number let's say pyramid of number here if there is a tree ecosystem let's say there is a tree ecosystem and the tree is actually the autotroph over here so the tree is only one but on the level of the tree there are so many other organisms which are sustaining their life so the pyramid of a pyramid of number in a tree ecosystem will be inverted like this because the bottom most layer where the food is being made only one organism is there that is the tree but as you go upwards the number of organisms keep increasing so here now let's come back to it the pyramid of biomass remain inverted for both aquatic and terrestrial ecosystem no the pyramid of biomass is inverted only for aquatic ecosystem but for terrestrial ecosystem it is not inverted right for terrestrial ecosystem we have big trees we have a uh, huge um, heavy trees that are there on the terrestrial ecosystem because of which at the bottom level the biomass is higher right so first is incorrect then pyramid of numbers can exhibit both upright and inverted forms this is absolutely correct depending on the ecosystem and pyramid of energy will always be upright for any ecosystem that is absolutely correct so only two is the correct answer and i hope you are able to understand that there are three kinds of pyramids pyramids or there is there will be pyramid of energy then there will be pyramid of number which is also called pyramid of organisms and there will be a, a pyramid of biomass these two can be inverted this will never be inverted okay chalo last question for the day consider the following statements regarding bio geochemical or nutrient cycle a nutrient cycle can be termed as a perfect or imperfect cycle based on replacement period gaseous cycle are mostly perfect cycle while sedimentary cycles are relatively imperfect reservoir for gaseous cycle is atmosphere or hydrosphere and for sedimentary cycle is earth crust and methane cycle is an example of compound gaseous cycle how many of the given statements are correct so gaseous cycles or the sedimentary cycle basically biogeochemical or nutrient cycle which we are talking about these are just like there is water cycle right water uh, is in the seas then it goes to the atmosphere it becomes cloud it comes down as rain uh, goes down in the uh, you know ground water so all of that is a cycle similarly for multiple uh, elements there are cycles for example there is carbon cycle now carbon cycle is an imperfect cycle and why do i say so 
because carbon cycle will also have the carbon being stored inside the earth so it is not a perfect um, you know perfect uh, mix similarly this is methane cycle methane cycle methane is being released by living organism it's going up then you know circulating in the entire so methane is a gaseous cycle methane is a gas and methane overall is a gaseous cycle so this is correct then reservoir for gaseous cycles like let's say the nitrogen cycle nitrogen cycle is a gaseous cycle is the atmosphere or hydrosphere and for sedimentary cycle it's the earth crust isme se sawal aa chuka hai the phosphor cycle phosphorus cycle or the sulfur cycle wherein they these particular elements they can be stored in the earth in the form of uh, rocks hai na phosphoric rocks sulfur rocks so these are sedimentary cycles and the reservoir for sedimentary cycles is the earth's crust so third is correct then gaseous cycles are mostly perfect cycles sedimentary cycles are relatively imperfect cycles this is absolutely correct because sedimentary cycles mein i just told you about carbon also right uh, similarly for phosphor also they will end up remaining inside the earth for millions of years because they will transform into rock and so there will be no complete cycle but in the case of uh, air in the case of uh, you know the gaseous cycles like the nitrogen cycle or the methane cycle the circle gets completed okay so th uh, second is in second is correct and nutrient cycle can be termed as a perfect or imperfect cycle based on replacement period absolutely correct if millions of years are being taken अब जैसे आप कार्बन साइकिल को भी आप परफेक्ट साइकिल बोल सकते हो बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली लेट्स से टुडे वी आर टेकिंग आउट द कार्बन वी आर टेकिंग आउट द फॉसिल फ्यूल्स व्हिच वाज बरेड इनसाइड द अर्थ मिलियंस ऑफ इयर्स अगो बट दैट इज नॉट अ परफेक्ट साइकिल बिकॉज द रिप्लेसमेंट पीरियड ऑफ दैट एंटायर एलिमेंट इज सो लॉन्ग दैट यू कैन नॉट रियली ट्रैक इट राइट सो हियर ऑल फोर आर करेक्ट एंड द कांसेप्ट ऑफ सेडिमेंट्री एंड गैशियस साइकिल्स इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट राइट so yes today we have talked about the overall atmos uh, the overall uh, ecological functions of an ecosystem this is the second chapter in environment and i had a lot of fun explaining this in fact environment tends to be one of the best things in upsc that you can study i personally love this subject a lot because you see it everywhere around you and you are able to understand and because of um, the increasing weightage of this particular um, subject in your examination also it's good that people's people's conscious is going towards climate change and how to arrest climate change but as a student when you study the subject it is a very beautiful subject and i hope i am able to instill that kind of curiosity in you that you study the processes you observe the processes that are going on and you'll be able to solve the questions better as well so yes that's all for today's class i will see you all in the next class um for this particular just a second yeah for this particular um, subject which is environment the only source that i am suggesting to you is sunya is books because there is uh, no static source for this particular subject so if you have the sunya is book please cover this chapter function of an ecosystem and uh, in the next chapter we are going to talk about an even more interesting aspect uh, we'll go towards terrestrial ecosystem where we live right we live in the terrestrial ecosystem so we'll study how things function in terrestrial ecosystem so thank you so much for attending this class till here and uh, please do not forget to read uh, the chapter that i told you and i'll see you all in the next lecture bye bye